Dawn comes early in late May. But not too early for fly fishing guides Alex Zip and Cody Hale. They are spending the morning away from their duties at the Drift Fly Shop in Pueblo to see what's going on with the reservoir's populations of bass and carp. If all goes well, the pair will score a Pueblo Fly Fishing Grand Slam, a largemouth bass, a smallmouth, a wiper, and a carp. While a midge hatch fills the air, Cody eases the boat quietly to the back of the North Cove. Alex takes the bow to rig up a fly rod. The first item on today's agenda is to find out if the smallmouth bass are looking up. Alex's popper is soon smacked by a resonant smallie. Fun on top. It's not very big, but he's putting a bend in the seven yeah. weight. Little red eye. Meanwhile, some of the male smallmouth bass are busy guarding their spawning beds in the shallow water near the shore. The males select the spawning site and sweep out the nest using their tails. The nest is about three feet wide and is usually located near a tree or other type of cover. The male bass guards the eggs in the nest from predators such as sunfish and crayfish. Wooly bugger doesn't instigate a defensive hit, but when Cody changes to a crayfish pattern and drops a cast close to the bed, the bass attacks it. After a quick battle, the bass is released and goes right back to guarding the nest. No worse for the wear. Farther back in the cove, largemouth bass are also on the beds, but they prefer to build their spawning beds in a little more vegetation. Many of the reservoir's back coves offer solitude and sight fly fishing for largemouth bass. Here the anglers target bass they can see holding around structure. Bass.
Okay, so we got the bass slam. With largemouth and smallmouth landed and released, the next order of business is to locate and catch a wiper. Get a fast sink line on here. Wipers are aggressive predators that will take a fly that resembles a gizzard shad. It's unweighted, big shad imitation, epoxy head, kind of a big profile but light, light on weight, big on profile. Tiemco specialty wide gap hook of theirs. Alex ties on the streamer with a loop knot to give the fly a little more action. We've got a little loop that this fly can move around on a little more freely. Casting for wipers involves trying to get as much distance as possible. Here, Alex demonstrates how to make a double haul cast. So in order to get a lot of line out fast, the double haul, you just pull against the line through the rod stroke. So as I move the rod, I'm gonna pull down. And that puts a deeper bend in the rod deeper the bend, the more power the rod's going to generate and it's going to shoot more line out. There we go. I don't have a good hook set on him yet. Ow, I don't know. He's coming. Is he off? Ah. No, he's on. Kick that motor into high gear. He's not very big. I think he's a bass, I don't think he's a wiper. No, it's a little wiper. Little wiper. The wipers are small, but fight hard. Now with three species on the scorecard toward the Grand Slam, there remains but one species to catch on the fly, a carp. Carp can be the most challenging of all, but today they are nowhere to be seen except for a few swimming in the snag-infested stick-ups. No grand slam this morning, but a fine day nonetheless, and a long summer of great fishing ahead.